of all the wicked tales we tell our children. O oh Lord, forgive us the tale of the bayou. Twas meant to keep them safe, make them frightened of the swamps, not lure them into that darkness like a siren's call. It is the year 1895 in the southern United States, and a mysterious happening known as the Louisiana Event has left the populations of Stillwater Bayou, the Lawson Delta, and the great parish of DeSalle devastated by a mysterious plague. Untold horrors walk the bayou, and great abominations must be hunted down, defeated, and banished back to hell. As esteemed members of the Great Hunter's Lodge, it falls to you and your companions to collect the bounty and escape, because the greatest threat you will find lurking in the swamps is not the darkness, but your fellow brethren of the Lodge. I am Dan, aka Wolf, and today we're going to take a look at a very unique and original game that I have been addicted to for almost three years now. But first, I'm going to ask you, if you are jamming out to the content that I produce, subscribe to me, leverage the unrivaled power of that notification bell, and don't forget to leave your love in the comments. There are reports of an epidemic, a plague if you will, concerning the populace deep in the bayou. I refer to this as flagrant speculation. The people affected by this are no doubt of a low creed. It is not uncommon for their sort to be afflicted by maladies which we superior men do not need to fear. Claiming such a thing as an epidemic is therefore not but a misinterpretation of their natural state. This being the case, calls to close the port of New Orleans will go unheard. Good God-fearing folk have my assurance as the governor of the great state of Louisiana that there is nothing left to fear. The body of this poor farmhand has been slowly changing. The heart seems to be pumping some sort of nutritional fluid into the veins, which in return house tiny larvae. The circulatory system now seems venated, like the wings of a horsefly. The specimen appears to be changing, evolving. Is the black liquid its blood? For what purpose? I don't know. In Hunt Showdown, it is this darkness and more that the United States government wishes to cover up, and that is why you and your friends, as sworn members of the Great Hunter's Lodge, have been hired as bounty hunters to eradicate the great evil lurking in the swamps before its corruption can spread. As members of the Lodge, you are more than just ex-soldiers and big game hunters. You have deeply studied the occult and the arcane arts, unlocking the ability to see things that lurk between the realms of reality as well as other powers that make you a force to be reckoned with. He's dead. Nice. In the standard format of the game, you and a player partner randomly spawn into one of three giant maps that are each one square kilometer in size, which is approximately 300 acres of land. Scattered throughout this map are five other teams of player hunters, or any combination of brave solos. And all of you have the goal of finding the clues that will lead you to the great monster's lair, so that you can defeat the boss, banish them, and escape with the bounty they drop. But that's if you and the other hunters don't kill each other first. I just killed them all. As someone who notoriously hates PvP and competitive first-person shooters especially, Hunt Showdown stands alone to me in that regard because it is completely different than all of the others in a way that I found compelling and addictive. Instead of the rapid flick-shot pace of games like Fortnite, PUBG, and Call of Duty, Hunt Showdown is a much more grounded experience with a gritty, careful pace that matches the dangers that lurk everywhere, not just from the other players, of whom there are only a few in a very large area, but from the environment. And sound plays a critical role in the game, which is where Hunt Showdown's 3D audio really shines. While you can rush in a mad dash throughout the 300 acre map, you are going to set off a cacophony of sound that can alert other hunters to your presence. Even stepping on a snapping stick can give away your position to catastrophic results. 
The Louisiana event has brought untold abominations to the bayou. Grunts with strange larvae flowing through their black-blooded veins, screaming women with hives of insects growing from their abdomens, immolated beings walking the swamps in an eternal rage, packs of seemingly undead hellhounds ready to tear you apart, moaning figures covered in bizarre growths that act like an impenetrable armor. Mysterious tentacled creatures lurking in the shallow waters, just waiting to rip you and your friends to shreds. Great unstoppable hulks capable of withstanding countless bullets that give birth to poisonous leeches. The threats in the bayou are terrifying and everywhere. When you spawn into a map, you will use the secret of Darkseid to search for clues that whisper from the shadows like pale blue fireflies. After carefully navigating to one and performing a brief ritual to collect the clue, you must examine your map to see how it breaks. Darkened areas mean the boss you are hunting is elsewhere, so you must proceed to another location to investigate more clues. Once you collect your third clue, the boss's lair will be revealed to you on the map. Each boss is different, and new players must approach defeating them carefully, all the while being wary of rival hunters showing up at any moment. If you are fortunate enough to reach the boss first, try to defeat them quickly so that you can begin the banishing ritual and set up defenses before other hunters arrive. Once hunters begin a banishing ritual, all hunters in the map are notified so that they can move on the boss layer immediately. Once the banishing ritual is complete, the boss will drop two bounty tokens which you and your partner can pick up, though everyone on the map will be notified that you have done so. The bounty can also be seen on the map as a streak of lightning in your approximate location. And other hunters can also see lightning firing down on the bounty carrier's position through dark sight. When you hold the bounty, your job is to head to one of the map's three extractions, where an armored stagecoach or heavy plated steamboat await you, where you must survive for 30 seconds to safely extract the match. When picking up the bounty from a banished boss or a dead hunter, you will be given 5 seconds of dark sight boost, which allows you to see other hunters in dark sight as a vague orange glow. Looting a dead hunter or claiming the clue of a second bounty will replace replenish one second of dark side boost. There is nothing quite more thrilling than pursuing fleeing hunters to the extraction and stopping them to claim the bounty for yourself, or being chased yourself to the extraction and trying to defend you. you and your partner from rivals who would steal your glory for themselves. Got him. Good job. Here, get out of here. Yeah. And if playing with one friend wasn't enough, you can play with up to two friends in special trinity matches, where four teams of three hunters are pitted against each other in the bayou. And of course, if you're brave enough, you can always go solo against your choice of duos or trios. From defending your bounty from rivals, to stealing the bounty from those who reached the lair before you, to taking advantage of groups of hunters already fighting it out, there are countless strategies and situations that arise in Hunt Showdown. There are bear traps and trip wires you can place, loud generators you can turn on to power a compound and mask your footsteps, clever bombs that release devastating spirals of concertina wire, gunpowder tools you can toss to create the sound of an artificial gunfight, barrels you can trap or shoot to various effects, even using a silenced weapon to shoot an emulator fighting enemy hunters can be devastating, leaving you the victor. In Hunt, there is no one loadout to rule them all. Your build will play to specific scenarios that you may or may not encounter in your match. While there are expensive weapons that are unlocked later in the Bloodline, the starter weapons are some of the most solid and dependable instruments in the game, just as capable of killing you as anything else. Got her. <laughs> Any veteran Hunt player knows that a Winfield rifle, a pair of Cadwell conversion pistols, and a Romero shotgun are nothing to underestimate. You are going to die a lot, so it is not wise to get attached to your hunter. You will go through and recruit many of them, spending the game's currency to do so. The money you earn collecting clues, extracting with the bounty, looting from dead hunters, and taking dollars from cash registers as well as the money you get from increasing your bloodline will pay for the hunters you recruit as well as the equipment you outfit them with. And when you want to play it cheap, there will always be at least one hunter to recruit for free. While the hunters available to be recruited are random in between each match, you can always unlock legendary hunters with blood bonds or by purchasing DLCs 
and once unlocked, your favorite legendary hunter can always be recruited just as you would pay for a random hunter. Hunters that survive a match gain independent experience that can be used to give your hunter various traits, such as the ability to fan pistols, the ability to move more quietly, retrieve clues at a distance, etc. Most hunters don't survive more than two matches, but when you do, you can max out your hunter at level 50, which is quite the achievement. Any hunter that reaches level 25 or higher can be retired in exchange for experience directly paid to your bloodline. And leveling your bloodline is how you unlock most of the base weapons and traits, though you can unlock variants as well as special ammo types by earning XP with base weapons as specified in the Book of Guns. As your bloodline increases, you will be able to recruit tier 2 and later tier 3 three hunters, veterans of their craft who come with better skins, weapons, and random traits. And once you reach Bloodline 100, you can prestige to unlock random legendaries and start all over again. And given how solid the base weapons are in the game, prestiging and starting over at Bloodline level 1 isn't as crippling as one might think. The current build of Hunt has a very effective skill-based matchmaking, which makes my lobbies much more reasonable than they were in the first couple of years of the game. Everyone dies in Hunt, but I don't feel like I'm always being killed by Navy SEALs or by professional esports athletes, as was many times the case prior to the implementation of skill-based matchmaking. From the lore, to the earthy tone and gritty texture, to the unique gameplay and concept, Crytek has created a masterpiece experience that truly stands alone. While Hunt cannot be compared to other shooters, future shooters will undoubtedly be compared to Hunt, and I can't wait to see how it influences things to come. If this video meant something to you, you can help me build something great by subscribing and sharing the good vibes and good spores of this content across the four corners of the internet. Follow me on Twitter and show me pictures of the creatures in your wolf pack. And don't forget that I have other videos that may provide you with something you didn't know that you were searching for. Until next time, I will catch you in the wilderness of the mental. Really? Jeez.